for the thousands of professionals keeping us filth free around the country, the job of the restaurant inspectors is surely one of the most important for our public well-being. Here in Wolverhampton, John and Faye's daily job is to make sure that behind the welcoming facade of the multitude of restaurants, the public are as safe as they can be from possible bad food hygiene in the kitchens. Today is a surprise visit to an Indian restaurant that in the past has become a regular haunt. The premises has been a problem in the past, but I believe they may be under new proprietorship, so um, they're sort of their past history wouldn't necessarily be taken into consideration. The worst that could happen is that we find um, sort of rodent activity, either rats or mice, um, and if we can determine that it's an active um, infestation, then the, the premises would be shut down. After politely gaining entry, John and Faye can now go about their inspection. First impressions of the kitchen, however, don't look that good. The kitchen looks very cluttered, uh, and ideally you, you wouldn't have clutter in the kitchen. You want to be able to have a food premises which is easy to keep clean. Um, one of the major problems with too much clutter in a kitchen is that you're not, easy, you're not able to easily identify own activity. One of the things we sort of look for is, is if there's um, food lying around at room temperature. Obviously food needs to be kept under temperature control conditions um, to ensure that it, the particular problem with rice is that rice, um, you actually get spores forming in rice. Um, and the problem is you can't kill those spores okay and they'll actually produce a toxin and no amount of reheating would actually um, remove that toxin from the food. So we'd be looking for, for them to be keeping food uh, in the fridge under temperature control conditions and in particular foods like rice. Very quickly the threat of toxins from room temperature rice pale into insignificance with another of John's discoveries. One problem I've just found, uh, I've looked in a large container of rice here and unfortunately what we've got is a screw, a large masonry screw which is obviously uh, something you don't want to see in rice and would be particularly unpleasant if that ended up on someone's plate but it, it doesn't really bear thinking about uh, what would happen if that got into somebody's mouth. Um, so I'm pleased I'm, I found it really, rather than, a, rather than a diner. After the extra ingredient in the rice, the poppadom cupboard is next on the agenda. I can, I can see that they've got a, a cabinet here which they're using to keep, to keep foods warm. Again, minor cleaning issues, you know, there's accumulation there of food perhaps hasn't been cleaned for a while. Things like poppadoms, they're a ready-to-eat food, so it's really important that they're protected against any source of contamination. So perhaps cleaning appears to be an issue. With the storage of the rice and the poppadoms already conspiring against the proprietor, let's just hope things are set to improve. <laughs> In Wolverhampton, restaurant inspectors John and Faye are continuing their unannounced inspection of the local Indian restaurant. Already they found a masonry screw in a bucket of rice and the poppadom cupboard didn't get the thumbs up. It looks like things might be getting even worse with a good look at a chopping board. Another sort of issue I've found is the, the condition of this chopping board. OK, as you can see, heavily scored um, and there's even sort of mould accumulation. Um, now the problem with heavily scored chopping boards is that the scores um, will harbour bacteria and once a chopping board's got into this sort of condition as you can see it's quite sort of porous you can't keep it clean pretty unpleasant really so this chopping board is um Good for the bin. General cleanliness of a kitchen can tell a lot about how it's run and how the staff are dealing with more serious issues like cross-contamination of food. Consequently, John is always eager to check in the darkest recesses of an establishment. The floors under the worktops need cleaning every three days. A quick look with the torch will reveal all. What I can sort of see under here is that there's an accumulation of food debris. It's important to distinguish between what's from today uh, and what's been there for a while. Um, and I can see from looking at here uh, that some of this has been here for quite some time. For example, there's a, what appears to be a rotten potato. Uh, it just shows that, you know, somebody's not taken a brush to the floor. Not only are the kitchen staff seemingly not sweeping under the cabinets, Faye has now discovered even the most rudimentary cleanliness can't really be achieved. When did the soap run out? Did you not want to buy any more soap? No. no. Okay. You're happy with the fairy liquid? Okay. John is also finding out that the lack of hand soap isn't the only problem when it comes to the washing up. We've got a container uh, being used for storage of, of cleaning equipment. Now, as you can see, you know, 
you probably can't smell it. Um, you've got cleaning cloths which are just in, a, in an atrocious state really, covered in food debris, uh, in a poor condition. If you're using something to clean, it's obviously got to be clean. You can't clean with dirty equipment. Also here, <clears throat> we've got a colander which obviously they've, they've done a bit of a DIY job on it. You can see where they've drilled the holes bigger. Now what that's actually left behind is, is sharp metal shards which could come off into food and again end up on somebody's plate. Um, so again, that's the sort of equipment that just needs to go in the bin. John and Faye have finished their inspection of the Indian restaurant. They found that the establishment's cleaning of kitchen equipment and surfaces isn't up to scratch, and also more attention needs to be paid to cross-contamination in the fridge. John and Faye always allow time for proprietors to put things right, so for the time being, the restaurant is getting a stay of execution. I was just explaining that we're probably going to revisit in about a month's time, um, because there's um, a few cleaning issues um, and cleaning has been an issue in the past um, but the proprietor isn't here at the moment so I've just obtained his contact telephone number, his mobile and I'm going to speak to him and then do a revisit in about a month. For all the inspectors it's not so much about being heavy handed and closing food businesses down, it's about educating the cultural mix of eateries in Wolverhampton about the British laws they have to comply with, but at the same time making sure that the inspectors are fully aware of what all the diverse religions in the city require. We also try and sort of keep abreast of different sort of religions and what they eat and their beliefs so we, we you know, we're not sort of trying to ask them to do something which is totally against their, their religion and their, their beliefs really. And with over 500 restaurants and 300 takeaways in Wolverhampton alone, it's a constant balance that John and Faye relish.